Hey there, it's me, Jason, or I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, otherwise known as an out of work sleep tech. I come to you today, hat in hand, to share with you some free information. I started this with freecpapadvice.com. By God, we're going to give away free advice as much as we can. So a lot of you have been utilizing my service uh, through AXG Sleep Diagnostics to have a PAP therapy data analysis, look at your Oscar data. So anyway, there's a concept that I just wanted to share. It's pretty common. Uh, it causes a lot of problems. Uh, and so that's what this video is about. Hopefully it helps a lot of you out when you're evaluating your Oscar data on your own. Uh, if it gets to a point where you just absolutely cannot uh, figure this stuff out, I'm always available. It is a paid service. It's axgsleepdiagnostics.com. You can look up PAP therapy, uh, PAP data analysis. It's in there. If it's not too much trouble, I humbly ask that you check out the description box below for some of our links. Uh, in there are ways that you can help support the channel if you so choose, uh, as well as some other links I'd like you to see. And let me start this off by saying, this video is sponsored by me. Please consider using my Amazon affiliate link down in the description box below. I clicked the link and added some items that I need, like some Canadian sphagnum peat moss, cause I grow in a blueberry. I even got some replacement filters for my fridge because my family will never understand hose water. I also got some rechargeable batteries because, well, I have a fetish with things that recharge, okay? And I had to get a replacement screw for my Stay Right pool filter because I discovered I have very strong forearms and I am still a thick boy. Stick it out, even white boys got the shout. Baby got back. This is a problem I see very, very frequently. Uh, I've been doing a lot of these CPAP therapy data analysis through my website, AXG Sleep Diagnostics. From the 5th through the 12th, I was testing uh, some equipment and it led to, this is the best night, led to an absolute disaster. So pay special attention to the leak rate and then the AHI. AHI is low on every single night, but watch the leak rate. You'll see these spikes. You'll see some spikes and so the rapid increases with flattening and then severe drop-offs. You see a lot of those. This is actually the one good night. A lot of these nights are also shortened because I took the mask off. I'll explain in a minute. But every night is fairly terrible as far as leak goes, but the AHI is all either pretty much always under one. So before we get too far into this, so before we get too far into this, if you are looking for someone to have another set of eyes on your Oscar data, axgsleepdiagnostics.com, I do the PAP therapy data analysis, tons of satisfied, happy customers. We've helped a lot of people. I've met a lot of really nice people and spoken with them, helped them resolve little problems with their sleep. And this is a major problem that we have that I'll be discussing. Now, also, if you don't mind, if you're shopping Amazon, I am an Amazon affiliate. And as such, I earn on all qualified purchases. So if you want to buy a glow in the dark toilet, sweet. How about a burrito blanket? Sweet. I earn on all qualified purchases. I have the link in the description box below. So with a lot of this Oscar data, when I'm helping other people out, I can't really stop this session and say, hey, do you mind if I record this? This is great information. So I finally, it, the perfect storm occurred with myself. And what happened was I am testing during this period, I decided to start testing the N30 nasal mask. Obviously it's a nasal mask, it doesn't cover up my mouth and leaks ensued. Now, why did leaks ensue? I was also testing a battery pack for travel use and I wanted to see exactly how long it would last using a low pressure setting and no humidification so I can get you know as long a life out of it as possible so I can see what the range is going to be. The month I should say prior to this I was actually testing out a full face mask. So you can see the data here. You can see how low the leak is. The leak is absolutely non-existent on this. Just really no leak to speak of. And obviously you can contrast that with this other week that is pretty terrible. So I see this a lot. You see the low AHI and you see these high leak periods. So one thing to know is that typically every 90 minutes you go into a period of REM. Uh, right here, actually, let me find a better one. So this is a good one. I bailed on it after about uh, one hour. Now my allergies were not allowing my, me to breathe through my nose at all. And uh, so every time I'd go into REM, it would, my mouth would pop open. My nose was already kind of clogged and I couldn't use a humidifier because the battery pack situation. So after about an hour, go into REM, leak, um, leak increases, I bail, I get dry mouth and I stop using it. This night, we can see about an hour and a half into it. We see this big spike here. We have sustained leaking actually all throughout here. So you can see this spot here, my mouth pops open and then sustained leaking. 
So this is what contributes to me waking up with a dry mouth throughout this entire period, just complete pure suffering. I finally catch it here, close my mouth. This is a clear awakening, leak drops, but watch, it'll just increase as I fall back asleep. Dry mouth, right in here I'm waking up again. You can see the choppiness of the airflow. Go back to sleep, then leak just slowly increases again until my mouth is dry, wake up again. So you can see there's no events really being flagged in here. I'm just waking up constantly with an extremely dry mouth. We can see that again on this night. I'm getting over, I think it's like five, uh, five hours and some change. Same kind of pattern occurring. There's really no events to speak of, but if we look here, look at this leak rate just spike up and then drop off as I wake up. Constant awakenings, not caused by an event, but, but caused by beef jerky tongue. And maybe a little bit of pepperoni neck. Again, leak spikes, wake up. Your greasy, oily, dirty, stinky, nasty mask, it's not going away on its own. Support this channel by trying MassBright at MassBright.com or Amazon. Here's the takeaway to this. Anytime you see on your nightly data, sustained leaks like this that go real high or you see a lot of spikes, that's a good indicator you have a mouth leak. And one that really pops up fast typically is caused by entering certain stages of sleep or even moving to your back. You never really know what it is. Now, how do you resolve these is the question, and that is by keeping your mouth closed. So if you have, during these examples, I was using a nasal mask, so I need to keep my mouth closed. Um, really the pressure is what the pressure needs to be. So you need to combat that with closing your mouth. So some of the best options that I've actually tried out are a double-sided boil and bite mouth guard. This is gonna encourage your jaw to stay together and keep your mouth closed. Using heated humidification is also probably one of the number one things that you can do to resolve this. Obviously with the battery, I, didn't, I couldn't turn on the heated humidification, so I just suffered through it. A soft cervical collar is also something you can try. I know it's just one more thing you're wearing on your, on your body when you're sleeping, but it really does a great job encouraging your jaw to stay up and your mouth to stay closed. There's also products on the market. I have not tried the products as of yet, but there's Somnifix and there's also Pronox. Those are both like tapes that you would put over your mouth. They have little holes where you can breathe, but they just encourage you to keep your mouth closed. Now with a full face mask, you can still do this. When people enter REM sleep, their jaws relax, their mouth falls back, the shape of their face changes, and now the mask doesn't fit. Some people will try to over tighten the mask, which makes things worse. Other people just let it leak throughout the night, and obviously that doesn't work either. So you need something to keep your jaw fixed in place. And the way to do that is a double-sided boil and bite mouth guard or a soft cervical collar or something to keep your chin up and in place. I'm not a fan of chin straps because people usually tighten them too much and they pull back into the airway, making the apnea even worse. Hopefully that information helps you out. If you have any questions, please list them in the comments section below. Um, actually, if you've even used any of our services, if you've done one of these with me, I would love it if you would kind of tell people about your experience below. We've helped a ton of people. Uh, it's always great to actually talk to people who have seen my videos, teach them about things in Oscar that maybe they're missing. It's kind of a nice back and forth. I learn a lot from you guys and hopefully you guys learn a lot from me. At least you guys have been telling me that. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and have a great day. Bye. Thank you to anyone watching this video, but an extra special thank you to my top level Patreon supporters. Thanks buddy to Ken Spackman, Alan Liu, Matthew Gray, Stuart Hethington, and Mona Swearingen. Thank you and thanks, buddy. Please consider using my Amazon affiliate link down in the description box below. Are you not using the affiliate link? You make Boof McTavish pause on drinking his mocha latte capilaca papa? You can use my Amazon affiliate link for anything. Just know that whatever you buy, anything at all, I earn on all qualified purchases. Boof is tired of being boofed out. Wow, that's a great price. Boof McTavish always uses the, the affiliate, affiliate link. link.